I'm a professor of environmental science. Today I'll be talking about myth busting around sustainability because our main limitation in solving climate change is not tangible. It is our mindsets. I'm Greg Schwartz, and this is my Oxford talk. A few years ago, I was free diving in the Pacific Ocean in the middle of a school of Galapagos sharks. One of them started swimming directly at me and turned away at just the last moment, it caused me to inhale some water and then vomit up my entire breakfast into the Pacific Ocean. It's quite an image. The smell of this chum whipped the sharks into an aggressive frenzy within feet of me. By all indications, I was about to be eaten. And then for some reason, I remembered that sharks only kill about 10 human beings a year, but humans kill 70 million plus sharks every year, which doesn't even seem possible. So I realized I shouldn't be afraid of them. They should be afraid of me. And that thought just made me feel safe and calm. My fear had been misplaced. It was based on a false assumption. And in fact, the exact opposite of what I assumed was actually true. Another life-threatening situation that inspires a lot of catastrophism and false assumptions and fear is global climate change. In the business world, maybe the biggest misperception is that going green will hurt profits. But again, in this case, often the exact opposite is true. The sustainability movement is arguably the biggest business opportunity of the century. The entire world is retooling for sustainability. And there's a lot of money to be made by those that lead the way. And that's because Capitalism is a lot like nature. The businesses and the species that adapt the quickest will survive and even dominate. So shifting our false assumptions around going green might be more important than we think. In one of the most cited books ever written called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, Thomas Kuhn showed that Every scientific revolution is catalyzed by a shift in paradigm. That is a shift in the beliefs, theories, and assumptions that are accepted in a society. After a paradigm shifts, there's a flurry of scientific and human progress. And this is even true in the athletic world. For decades, it was thought that running a sub four minute mile was an impossible human feat until Roger Bannister did it in 1954. And then right after he accomplished that, several other runners did the same. So had human beings suddenly biologically evolved in 1954 to run faster? Of course not. It was our mindset shift that made the difference. So changing how we think about a challenge, in this case, going green or solving climate change, is absolutely essential for us to actually accomplish those things. Einstein famously said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that we used to cause them. So let's look at a few false assumptions that we have around going green in the business world and how we can shift them. False assumption number one, Solving the world's problems is expensive. Well, let's shift that to funding the world's problems is expensive. The IMF estimates that fossil fuel companies who are the main cause of climate change receive about $6 trillion in annual direct and indirect 
subsidies. That's roughly enough to convert the entire planet to renewable energy in under two decades. So divesting from fossil fuels is absolutely critical. Even fossil fuel companies realize that because many of them are shifting some of their assets into renewable energies. False assumption number two, trees store the most carbon. Now, obviously trees are very important, but the planet's soils store four times the carbon than all the trees on Earth. So changing how we deal with our soils, changing the agricultural method in our supply chains can store eight tons of carbon per acre per 1% increase in soil carbon. And regenerative agriculture, as a general category, is the way to get there. Conventional agriculture, with its heavy tilling and pesticides, tends to deplete soil carbon. Number three, the belief that going 100% green should be our goal. When we convert any supply chain or industry to green energy, going 80% green is usually cost effective. But that last 20% gets incrementally much more financially and logistically challenging. So yes, we need to get to 100% green energy, but maybe the quickest way to get there is to set an achievable, attractive goal for businesses, such as going 80% green. And from that point, we can get to 100 much faster. We can break our inertia and move aggressively in the right direction. False assumption number four, education is key. Now, I'm a professor, so of course education is important, but what I mean is female education is key. Arguably, the biggest sustainability challenge of all is the rising global population. More people equals more resources consumed, especially as those people rise in wealth. So it turns out that rising female literacy rates corresponds to a decline in total fertility rate and a decline in crude birth rate. And that relationship is not the same for rising male literacy rates. Also research, including my own research, has shown that women use their money and decision-making power in ways that produce better environmental outcomes than men. So empowering and educating women is absolutely essential. The fifth false assumption is that, and this might be the most pervasive of all, going green is about minimalism. We hear that a lot, that sentiment. But the notion of minimalism and of resource scarcity is a result of linear thinking. We take it, we use it, we trash it. But nature is cyclical. The air, water, and soil on planet Earth have been here for millions of years, recycled over and over and over. And when we understand and synergize with those natural resource cycles, we tap into perpetual abundance. Zhang Yin, one of China's early female billionaires, understood this. She took waste paper from the US, from Los Angeles, took it to China and repurposed it into container board. And she made over $3 billion doing that. Basically, we know how to solve climate change. We stop producing so many greenhouse gases and we sequester as much as we can from the atmosphere. And largely we have the technology to accomplish this. So why are we still slow to change? Well, again, this points to the fact that our main limitation may not be our uh, something logistical or tangible. It is our mindsets. Now, we've just looked at some false assumptions, but there are also shared core limiting beliefs around the concepts of risk, sacrifice, trust, opportunity, and responsibility. So let's look at those. First, risk. In the ESG world, ESG means, of course, environmental, social, and governance, which is basically the sustainability world. 
we tend to focus completely on assessing the material risk that climate change poses to our supply chains and profits, rather than looking at the opposite. We also don't look at the incredible potential for increased efficiencies, untapped profits, broader societal benefits. Deutsche Bank did a meta-analysis of 56 studies and found that companies with high ESG ratings outperform the market in the medium and long term, and they also have a lower cost of debt and equity. Now, whether this is due to better efficiency, better management, or just improved public perception, the takeaway is that high ESG ratings translate to better business performance. Sacrifice. It's not a sacrifice to decarbonize. It's not a sacrifice to treat workers better in our supply chains. The true sacrifice is a billion people breathing polluted urban air, thousands of people dying every day from unclean water, or entire coastal cities being slowly inundated by rising sea levels. Those are true sacrifices, and those are preventable. Let's look at the concept of trust. So the sustainability world and ESG in general, it's a wild frontier. There are countless rubrics and metrics, little standardization. Greenwashing is still, unfortunately, not uncommon. So customers can sometimes find it difficult to believe companies when they say they're going green or going sustainable. So trust has become a new currency. And trust is a feeling, so you can't fake it. It has to begin at the C-suite level with transparency and earnest action. And a perfect example of this is Yvon Chouinard, the sustainability-minded environmentalist founder of Patagonia. Decades ago, he infused into his company a sustainability ethic that is not questioned and it is easy to trust. Opportunity is next. Elon Musk is good at recognizing opportunities. I think we can all agree upon that simple fact. He saw that the US space program was anemic. He saw that electrification and transportation technology was causing climate change. And he believed that he could solve those problems and simultaneously make huge profits. He was correct, he did that and now he is the wealthiest person in the world. And I'll say again what I said before. The entire world is retooling for sustainability, and there's a lot of money to be made by those that lead the way. And lastly, responsibility. Companies have a responsibility to create value for their shareholders and their investors. But let's stop thinking so small the business and financial sectors have, probably more than any other sectors, have the resources and the power to solve our social and ecological problems. And with that power comes responsibility. In 1987, Barbara Conable, then president of the World Bank, had a bit of an awakening. He gave a public speech in which he stated that the World Bank would no longer invest in development projects that entailed any deforestation. Now that is an individual at the helm of an incredibly powerful financial institution deciding to act with responsibility. So we've seen that false assumptions and limiting beliefs are huge liabilities for companies because they make them slow to adapt and change. All the while, more responsive companies are finding new market niches and gaining competitive advantage. So in the face of global climate change, yes, we need to adapt our technologies. Yes, we need to adapt our operations. But in order to catalyze those changes, first we must adapt our mindsets. Thank you.